right. We're back again. A lot of great questions about prostate cancer, but I also, because it's, it's Mother's Day, I want to talk about ovarian cancer. Um, and uh, we're going to talk uh, with my good friend, Dr. Siegel, who's online. Mark, good morning. How are you? Good morning, David. Nice to be with you. Okay. Uh, happy Mother's Day to your lovely wife. I hope you have bought all the gifts. Uh, uh, otherwise, you, you can't uh, stay in the bedroom tonight. So, <laughs> <laughs> Mark, I want to talk to you about ovarian cancer because, you know, it's a silent killer, and we have all the phones are ringing, and we're going to, like, try to answer them while you're on the phone with me. So ovarian cancer, we have about 21,000 of new cases, 14,000 die from this. And due to the fact that it's located inside the abdomen um, and there are no real symptoms, and by the time you find ovarian cancer, it's already at the late stage. It's, sometimes I feel like prostate is also like located in a similar area, and a lot of people don't know what to do with it. But given the fact, you know, there's a study that just came back from London that, of course, they use this uh, protein CA125 to diagnose it. But now they have like a new method called ROCA method, uh, which they're lowering the threshold for that CA125 to diagnose ovarian cancer. Um, what is your take on ovarian cancer? I'm sure you've dealt with this. Uh, what should people know about it? And uh, get, maybe you can shed light on this. Well, first of all, David, I like to say that there's no better endorsement of the PSA, the prostate-specific antigen, than ovarian cancer. I know that sounds strange, but let me explain that. Both of these cancers are deep within the body. Both of them are very difficult to diagnose clinically. You may have no symptoms. With ovarian cancer, you may see weight gain. You may see weight loss. You may see loss of appetite. You may or may not see abdominal pain. Usually, by the time we see ovarian cancer, it's too late to get it early. We have that CA125, but that's not a great indicator. The PSA for prostate, and I know there's been a lot of controversy about this, but you and I believe it's a much better indicator, and it, and it alerts you to something being wrong with the prostate. We don't have a test like that for, for ovarian cancer. What we do have, and we're still years away from this, though, is that in the works there's a lot of genetic testing going on and something called protonomics where – you can look for an array of abnormal proteins in the blood that are markers for ovarian cancer. That's the wave of the future, but that's not in the doctor's office yet. So it, we still have to say, you know, what is your genetic risk? What is your risk? And then maybe use the CA125, but it's nowhere near as good as the PSA for men. Uh, for, for a lot of women that are listening today, um, and they may not have any symptoms, but they may have family history of someone who may have had ovarian cancer, what are we telling them to do? Are we saying, like, you know, get a uh, CAT scan when you're er, uh, at a young age to detect this? Or if you start having any kind of, like, uh, menstrual cycle abnormalities or weight loss, what's the big message out there to public? Well, I like your point that I'm early. I'm quick to do a CAT scan on someone I think it may be at risk. But, you know, another thing women out there may not know and should know on Mother's Day is that there's a crossover between the BRCA gene for breast cancer and ovarian cancer. So if, you're, if there's a lot of breast cancer in your family, you want to get that BRCA gene. But if you have a BRCA gene, a BRCA gene, then your risk of ovarian cancer is also sky high. So they, they, they go in clusters. We, well, we're going to, to know in the future more and more about genetic abnormalities like that. I think what's interesting is I think Angelina Jolene obviously brought a huge publicity to this field. And the fact that she went ahead and she removed her ovaries at a young age, which has uh, consequences because now you go into early menopause. But there's a big message out there that is that when you catch it early and certainly if you have like a very strong family history and genetics, being preemptive and doing the right thing can save your life. And I'm not saying that every woman out there should go out and take the ovaries out. Uh, but talk to your doctor and find out what the tests and genetic testings are and be careful about your, your tumor markers such as CA125.